Welcome to Roswell United Methodist Church Online. My name is Marian Brown, one of the associate pastors, and this is our on-demand version of the sermon that will be preached on this Sunday morning. And please know that our Sunday services will be live streamed beginning at 9 a.m. for the contemporary service and 11.15 for the traditional service. If you would like to have the entire worship experience on demand, that will be available on Monday morning. We appreciate you being a part of our online community and we invite you to be active and participate through your giving. And so we thank you for your support and your generosity. Before we listen to this Sunday sermon, let's have a moment of prayer. Gracious and holy Lord, we ask that you remind us that wherever we are, we are on holy ground. And so may you help us make space. So may we receive a message that you have for us in this moment. Be in our hearts so that it's open. Be in our ears so that they are open and be a part of our lives so that we are open to receive a challenge and an invitation. Work within us now and all around us so that we may know your presence and we may feel it fully. Through a moment now of words and scripture, speak to us, amen. Let's listen to this Sunday sermon. My name is Marian Brown. I'm one of your associate pastors, and I have the privilege of bringing a mission moment. Part of our March campaign for serving side by side is to highlight different ministry partners that we support. And our UMC supports over 35 mission partners here locally and globally. And today, I want to introduce you to the new executive director of North Fulton Community Charities, Sandy Holiday. Sandy, it is great to have you with us today. Thank hey, you for taking the time. Absolutely. It's a pleasure to be here. One of the reasons that I wanted to make sure our congregation knows you and gets to hear a little bit about your story is because of the connection between RUMC and NFCC. Mm -hmm. um, we are always thinking about how we can support you all because of Mary Drake one of our wonderful church members who helped found and start the wonderful ministry of NFCC. Right. Um, one way, just how long have you been at NFCC? It's kind of a new gig for you. Right, right. I, I still call myself a rookie. Um, <laughs> I've only been there for a little over a year. Uh -huh. So I am, I am new to North Fulton Community Charities, not new to the nonprofit space. So um, I joined it about a year ago, um, and it's just been wonderful. It's been a pleasure to just get to know the North Fulton community, all of our supporters. Um, and you mentioned Mary Drake, and it, it's just wonderful that we were faith-founded. And what was it about NFCC necessarily that made you want to mm -hmm. be a part of that nonprofit? There were so many reasons mm -hmm. um, that really drew me to North Fulton. I think part of it was faith. I think I was yeah. led there by faith. Mm -hmm. um, in my previous mm -hmm. life, I worked at a nonprofit that was in a Presbyterian church. And so one of the things that I really appreciated and that drew me here was that North Fulton was founded by faith. Right. So I do think to a degree, faith led me here. Um, I think part of it for me was um, a change in passion. You know, I spent 13 years working in the homeless community. Yeah. And, you know, it's devastating. I got to see firsthand the devastating effects that homelessness has on children and families and communities mm -hmm. and the high rates of domestic violence yes. and poor health outcomes. And so, you know, North Fulton's mission is really prevention centered. So right. they really work to prevent hunger and homelessness. Um, and so I wanted to pour my passion into that. Um, there's a more personal reason and that is that my parents were both immigrants. So they were mm -hmm. born in Cuba. I'm a first generation American. 
And I mean, I know that the reason my parents were able to be successful in this country is they were given access to opportunity. Right. So they were able to learn English, get their GEDs. And so N NFCC's robust education program really spoke to me. And you know, who wouldn't want to be a part of NFCC, right? <laughs> I mean, it's 40 yeah. years in the community. Um, it's kind it, of our hub. Yeah, it's, it's a, a cornerstone. Um, it's a beacon. It's so well respected. Yes. And I just, when I thought about, you know, being, you know, called to serve there and giving the privilege to serve there, um, I wanted to do that. And I felt like I could help, you know, or hoped to propel their mission. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's been, it's been wonderful. It, it's a decision I would make over and over again. <laughs> Well, it certainly has a wonderful legacy here in our community. Yes. Um, a lot of people use NFC for all kinds of things. Yeah. I think the biggest thing is the thrift shop. Mm -hmm. People say, oh, we have leftover food. Let's go take yeah. it to the food pantry. Or um, when they do any kind of cleaning in their house of any kind, it's let's go drop this right. off at NFCC. What are the other programs you mentioned a little bit about the education? Right. Just in case there's someone who doesn't know about all of the different divisions and departments. Right. What exactly is the scope of ministry and scope of help? I am so glad you asked that question because um, for so long we were all located in the one building where is Thrift and Pantry. And so it really is the face of North Fulton Community Charities. Um, but we have such a large campus and we do offer so much more. So certainly the food pantry, the thrift store, but across the street, we have the Barbara Duffy Center, and that is the hub for opportunity is, mm -hmm. is how we think of it. So we have the pantry and thrift that really is the part of the mission that helps ease hardship, because when you're in hardship, the first thing you need is food and clothes. Correct. The other side we're trying to get families to is opportunity, and that's going to be education. So we offer English classes, GED, um, we have GED tutoring, all kinds of workforce development, workforce shops. Um, it's really um, a lot of financial literacy, life skills there. Um, and then we also have their child care. A lot of people don't know that. Oh, I didn't. Yeah, yeah we have a child care so that our evening students um, can come and we watch their children. So, and the last thing we have there is case management, which are really the connectors in our organization to bring people in and connect them to not just all of the services at North Fulton, but also um, to the community. Okay, I don't want to put you on the spot on a number here. Okay. When I think about all of the different pieces of property mm -hmm. and the extent just of the small pockets that we yeah. see, like you mentioned the thrift and the pantry, mm -hmm. how many staff are employed at NFCC? And then my follow-up, do you have an idea of how many volunteers it takes to make it run? Yes. So we have 48 employees, yeah. um, only 30 are full time. Okay. And, you know, we really consider our volunteer army as part of our workforce. And in the last year, they donated over four, we had over 400 regular volunteers. And, you know, I was really curious about that because when I, you know, I was new last year and we closed the week of Christmas. Yeah. And that surprised me. And I said, what are we doing closing the week of Christmas? Um, and then it was brought to my attention, we can't operate without volunteers. And that's how critical they are. So over the holidays, they're with their families. Yeah. So those 400 volunteers donated over 53,000 hours. If they all stopped coming, we would have to find the resources to hire 25 full-time employees. Um, and that would cripple us. And yeah. so really, it's not just our employees that really drive our mission, it's the volunteer workforce. And spread over the city, over the county, that's your volunteer workforce. So they're coming from mm -hmm. Roswell, they're coming from Alpharetta, they're coming from oh, yeah. all over the county. Yeah, they come from all over. Our service area is Roswell, Alpharetta, Johns Creek, Milton, and Mountain Park. So um, they're coming from every nook and cranny of North <laughs> Fulton, <laughs> truly. And it's, it's students that come after school. Um, it's ret retired seniors. We have mm -hmm. veterans. We've got working moms, dads. I mean, we just have the gamut. And so it's just, it's just a wonderful opportunity yeah. for us to get to know our community as well. It's interesting. Every time I've been to NFCC to say hello or to do a tour or to even drop some food off from Must mm -hmm. Pantry ourselves, um, I always see an RUMC volunteer. 
Yeah. So <clears throat> I know that the dedication of the volunteers is there. Yeah. Once you get a part of NFCC, it's like you want to go back. Yes. And I think that's what you're <laughs> yes. seeing is. We hope so. <laughs> there's, <clears throat> whenever you see yeah. it, it's like you want to be a part of it. You yeah. want to help drive that vision. Yeah. Be like, I need to come back here yeah. and make this a part of my regular yeah. schedule. So I honor all of the work of those 400 volunteers. That's amazing. Yeah, absolutely. And um, it's really a lot of sweat equity. I mean, no, it's, it's hard work the volunteers yes. do. And I think, um, you know, one of the reasons, maybe the main reason that they keep coming back is one, they're appreciated tremendously. And we try to show that. <laughs> <laughs> I think the other thing is um, they get to see the mission in action firsthand yeah. because they're, you know, we get over 200 families in our food pantry daily. So our volunteers get to see that need come in. They get to meet that need, fill the orders, bring out the groceries. Um, so I think being a part of that mission in action is, is what helps draw them back. Say that again. How many families come every day for food? So last year we peaked at over 300 families and now we've gotten back down to our more normal over 200. Um, well, you know, it's funny. I say our, our more, it's our new normal. Yeah. Um, a year ago it was half that. So yeah, over 200, 250 families a day are coming through that food pantry. So that's that that's tremendous need. Um, and so we're seeing the food insecurity growing in North Fulton. When you say that, I am reminded, I read a newsletter, I think a year ago, mm -hmm. where um, Mel Fortin, the mm -hmm. director of the food pantry, put mm -hmm. out this alert and said, mm -hmm. we are seeing so many families yeah. with young kids, we have to have cereal. We're out of cereal. Yeah. And I remember yeah. the volunteers at RUMC that are connected at FCC, they came running and saying, Marion, whatever you do, we have to start getting cereal right. in boxes to NFCC. And so I can, as the, on this side of NFCC, I see that commitment and it has translated not just to boxes of cereal, but it's right. translated to wanting to be a part of your largest need, mm -hmm. um, which takes me to think about the overall financial need of NFCC, mm -hmm. that it is faith-based. It was faith started, mm -hmm. um, faith-based for us, I should right. say. Um, how many churches support NFCC and what is the significance of the financial support you receive from an RUMC or just right. in whole the faith communities? Um, it's dozens of churches. I mean, I, I, I can't tell you offhand, but it's dozens of churches and it's the whole faith community. So yeah. we have mosques, we have yep. temples um, that really mobilize for us. And you brought up something um, that's really important, which is the call to action, the call to alerts, because um, last Thanksgiving, we had a 25% increase um, in our seasonal program for our Thanksgiving food drive. Mm -hmm. And truly, every day we were running out of food. And looking at the next day and knowing we have another 100 families coming. And we kept thinking, who can we call that on a drop of a dime is going to stop what they're doing and send us the turkeys and the hams? And it was the faith community. And it's just that type of relationship we have to be able to reach out or you see a need, share it with the congregation is tremendous. And um, RUMC has supported us um, from the beginning, right? That's over 40 years of helping sustain us. And mm -hmm. this congregation is exceptionally generous. Um, you know, I went to a faith-based um, conference a couple of weeks ago. Oh. And it was around how to mobilize the faith community behind mission. <laughs> and a term they said that I'm so happy I get to use it today. Yeah. Is we need to, we as community organizations have to work towards biblical generosity oh and that's like heavy and that is so when when i think about you know what what is biblical generosity you know i see it from rumc in those 40 years your congregation um, has donated over four hundred thirteen thousand dollars to us in operating like, in operating just in operating budget to meet whatever is needed most so um I would call that biblical generosity. Yeah. <laughs> so it, it's, it's, oh, wow. um, yeah, it's how we sustain and move forward together. And I appreciate you knowing that number. That is, a, that is, mm -hmm. I love biblical generosity and I think $400,000. <laughs> yes, that is, I love that. Um, and I also think about the in-kind donations. Mm -hmm. um, can you talk a little bit about oh, yeah. those? And I know you could never put a number on the amount of people who deliver clothes and mm -hmm. shoes and furniture mm -hmm. and Christmas mm -hmm. decorations, mm -hmm. right. all those things, lamps. Um, 
I read in your newsletter that you recently had a number of how much operating came from your thrift store. So a couple of things there. One, you're right, we can't put a number on how many in-kind donations we receive of food and clothing and toys and backpacks, um, but we could put a value on it. Yes. And um, overall, it was almost half a million dollars we received from the faith community for in-kind donations last year. Um, the thrift store, you know, a lot of people might not know this. We don't just provide free clothing to families in need, but we're open to the general public. And mm -hmm. the sales generated last year um, over $1.3 million that is directly reinvested into our programs and services. And so, yes, we love to see RUMC <laughs> members <laughs> donating clothes and shoes and furniture um, because it doesn't just help us meet the need, it helps us actually reinvest back into the mission, which right. is tremendous. NFCC has a long history of doing amazing things, and I love that we can have a number on that because, you know, I even think about families spring cleaning. When you're done with a game, when you're done with something at your house, it can turn into part of that half a million dollars um, of an in-kind donation. What is... What should we be looking for going forward? Is there new thing, are there any new things on the horizon for NFCC? That's gonna be a long answer. Yeah. <laughs> because one of the things um, that we believe at NFCC is that it is, it's truly our responsibility and our obligation to the community to always be figuring out what is the next big need. You know, what, what do we do to evolve and innovate um, to not just expand our services, to to create new ones. Um, and so a couple of things there is um, our buildings and our campuses, right? Yeah. Um, everything, the vision we have for buildings and campuses and new initiatives is all driven by need. And looking at the data, looking at the need and figuring out what is the best use of our precious limited resources. And so we are currently renovating the Barbara Duffy Center. Mm -hmm. When it was built a few years ago, the second floor was not finished. Um, and last year we had a 54% increase in demand for education. And our wait list is long. So um, in a month we will have three new classrooms um, at the education center to meet that need. Nice. Um, yeah, that is, that, that's tremendous. And you know, we also have a need for pantry. That saw a 28% increase in need. So, you know, and our UMC volunteers know this. We have one building where we have tucked in there pantry and thrift. And it's tight. Like, it is. It it's, is. It's, it's you have to just avoid the traffic. Um, mm -hmm. And so there's thought to how do we separate that? You know, they're going to need their own building soon if we're going to continue to meet the need. And we also look at new services. Yep. Right. What, what are the things that we can do to provide new services that and that requires new space? And we did a survey of our clients and it wasn't what we expected. We thought oh. clients were going to want more rent, um, free childcare. Yeah. Um, it's not that it was healthcare and mental health. So looking at what do we do to create a space to provide those services? Um, I can say currently, and this is faith based driven mm -hmm. is, you know, we've been in Roswell for 40 years and the model is put the word out and hope that everybody who needs our services comes to us. And what we're finding, especially when we talk to our faith partners is the, f a lot of families who need us the most cannot access us. Right. Either it's, um, a transportation challenge, yeah. a work schedule challenge. Mm -hmm. So we have a pilot going on right now where we planted our first English class in the community, oh. um, with St. David's Episcopal nice. and it's wonderful and it's working well. It's developing its own following and wait list. And so now we're talking to other organizations and I think you'll see more of that is how do we put a pantry in this corner of the service area that can't ac access us? How do we right. put an English class over in this corner of our service area? Um, as an attorney, I told you it was going to be a long answer, Yeah. but I'll share one more thing as Please. an attorney. Um, this one's near and dear is when we look at our mission, we think to ourselves and always ask ourselves, how do we remove barriers for employment and housing, yeah. um, and financial stability? And a lot of it is legal issues. So there is no, currently no free pro bono legal clinic in North Fulton. Correct. Um, and so we have reached out to the business community. We're going to have a great partnership with a local business in Roswell, the Atlanta Legal Aid. Oh, and yeah. this summer, 
we'll be launching the first pro bono legal clinic in North Fulton. And I think that's going to really be tremendous, not just for our families, but for our other partners who will be able to refer. So the end, the, the list is long. If we're not doing our job well if we're not constantly trying to figure out mm -hmm. what else can we do. That will be life changing to have pro bono legal services. I think about the families that I'm seeing just anecdotally that are coming in from other countries seeking asylum. They cannot afford um, for people to help them with their appropriate legal documents. Right. They're here legally, but then there's so much more to be done legally. And yeah. so that could be life changing yes. for families. Um, and so I appreciate you thinking through what's next. <laughs> yeah, it keeps us busy. Yeah, uh, but it's rewarding, and um, and I think that's it. You know, we're looking at the trends, and um, kind of a newer trend we're seeing is in our English classes. Right, mm -hmm. we're it's doubled. It's doubled year over year, and um, it, it's tied to the immigration trend. We're it we is. have a lot of Venezuelan students. Yes, um, for the first time, we have students from Russia and Ukraine. So. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, really trying to figure out how do we remove those barriers for work visas and authorization to work um, is critical. I think a work permit right now costs $450 yeah. Yeah. just for the permit. That's not even the legal counsel to help right. get it. So um, You know a lot. You might I have can... to volunteer at my legal clinic. Yeah. <laughs> We'll take it. <laughs> well, again, it's just anecdotally yeah. what we yeah. see coming in from here. Um, so that if, if we're seeing that little minority, I cannot imagine the number of people coming yeah. into NFCC asking. Mm -hmm. Well, please know that you have a partner in RUMC. You have for 40 years, and we hope to continue to be for the next 40, and then the next 40, and the next 40. Um, we continue to use you as a referral service. So there are so many times we have said NFCC, NFCC. Um, you may not know that or feel that, but we want you to know that um, you are in our conversations weekly. Um, we have listed you so many times that some people have to say, remind us what NFCC is because it's just such a part of our vernacular. Right. Um, and so you certainly are part of our faith community and we, we're thankful for it. Well, thank you. And, and, and yeah, we, we, we can't do this without that. That's truly how we're sustained over the years. Um, and we do know, you know, we do know because we Good. see our UMC volunteers and when new families come to us, we're asking them, how did you hear about us? Um, that's really important for us to know. Um, and yes, we hear that our UMC, the churches are sending the families. And, yes. and that's, that's why we have this partnership right. um, because we try to stay very close to the faith community because you see before us the need in the community. So thank you for that. Well, and I would be remiss if I don't mention our partnership with our scouts. We have great scout troops that help us scout for food twice a month. And so I just want to also incorporate our Sunday school classes and our small groups and our yes. scouting program. They're yeah. certainly a part of us helping uh, reach out to NFCC. If you yes. don't mind, I'd love to have a prayer as we close. Of course. Let's pray. Holy and gracious Lord, thank you for a time that we can talk about your people and how we can serve and how we can be a stronger community. I ask for your blessings now on Sandy and her staff and the 400 volunteers and all of the faces that we know and those we don't know that make up North Fulton Community Charities. Unite us so that our actions and our spirits are working together to help educate, to help feed, to help clothe, and to help provide. May our days be ones that when we go to sleep, we know that we help the person in front of us. And so make us a stronger community because of our faith in you. And Lord, May we keep in our hearts this idea of a biblical generosity. And may we use that as a guide this season of Lent and going forward into Easter about how we can really spend time giving of ourselves the way Scripture asks us to. May we look for you in all things. And may we not think that it's too much or it's not ours. May we be invested in your people every day. 
continue to bless NFCC, all of the nonprofits that are represented in this area, and help our UMC, this church, be directed to do what you need for them. We ask all of this in your name, in your son's name. Amen. 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 Thank you so much for joining us online. It is a blessing to have the gift of technology to have sermon this way. We thank you for participating. And just a reminder, if you want to see the live services, 9 a.m. on Sunday for contemporary and 1115 Sunday morning for traditional services. And always we will have the full on-demand worship experience on Monday morning. And if there's ever a time that you would like to join us here at the physical location, we're located at 814 Mimosa Boulevard, Roswell, Georgia. We want to be connected with you. If you have a prayer request, please let us know by emailing pray at rumc.com. And we would love for you to be a part of our ministry through your giving. If you would like to support our campus and our ministries, you can do so at rumc.com slash give. And now hear these words of a benediction. Love without fear. Serve with commitment, and in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, go in peace. Amen. <laughs>